Hey, welcome back. A new research paper out of Google DeepMind and Princeton aims to completely append the way that people think about prompt engineering and make large language models do logic, problem solving, and reasoning much more aligned with how the human brain does those things. It's really interesting and the results are incredible. I'm gonna walk you through this paper. We're gonna look at some samples and results. And then finally, I'm gonna show you a GitHub repo that implements tree of thought prompting. So here's the paper. It's titled Tree of Thoughts, Deliberate Problem Solving with Large Language Models. And what it aims to do is give large language models the ability to think through problems before actually solving them. Let's look at the abstract. So the way large language models work is it's basically just predicting what's next in a text sequence. So you have the prompt and then the large language model is essentially predicting what's next in those series of words. And this is great for a lot of different use cases, but when you start to get into logical problems, reasoning problems, math problems, that's where this left to right decision-making really starts to break down. And what Tree of Thought promises to do is essentially set up a way for large language models to think through problems in multiple steps, to examine different paths to a solution, choose the best one, and then output the actual solution. Large language models are increasingly being deployed for general problem solving across a wide range of tasks, but are still confined to token level left to right decision making processes during inference. That means it's looking at a sentence and it's deciding what's the next most likely word to come after that. And that's how large language models work. This means they can fall short in tasks that require exploration, strategic look ahead, or where initial decisions play a pivotal role, meaning I need to think through problems in multiple steps. And there's been a number of solutions to this already before Tree of Thought came along. Chain of Thought is an example solution to this problem where Chain of Thought is a prompt in which you are asking the large language model to provide the logical steps in between the actual prompt and the solution. So here it says, Tree of Thought allows LMs to perform deliberate decision-making by considering multiple different reasoning paths and self-evaluating choices to decide the next course of action, as well as looking ahead or backtracking when necessary to make global choices. So it's not linear anymore. It can go down a decision tree figure out that that's not the best solution and then backtrack and try other permutations. And so there are three challenges that this paper tests Tree of Thought on. Game of 24, creative writing, and crossword puzzles. And I'll explain what each of these are when we get to them. But here's something important to note. In Game of 24, while GPT-4 with chain of thought prompting only solved 4% of tasks, our method achieved a success rate of 74%. That is an incredible improvement. And so in this diagram, you can really see what we're talking about. Now on the left side, we have input output prompting. This is the most simple form of prompting. Essentially give it an input, get an output. That's what most people do today. Next, we have chain of thought prompting in which we ask the large language model to explain step-by-step -step its reasoning as it comes to a conclusion or a solution. And last, we have self-consistency train of thought. And what that is, is essentially the same thing as chain of thought, except it asks the same thing multiple times and whichever result is the most consistent, whichever one comes up the most often, it chooses that one. And it's a, so that's a way to normalize the results that you're getting. So you're making sure that this is the most confident result from the large language model. Now on the right, this is tree of thought. And tree of thought essentially asks the large language model to come up with a number of solutions, these top level nodes. And from there, they can dive further into different permutations from that node, discover some that aren't working like these in red, go back up, find the best one, and then continue down. And finally, through this permutation, it has found the best result, the best output. And that's what tree of thought does. It's much more complex of a prompt and actually requires coding to implement versus any of the input output prompting, chain of thought, or self-consistency. So it's much more complex, but it also produces much better results. This paper goes really deep into the math of how everything works and uses symbols to represent the different types of prompts. We're not gonna go too deep into the math though. Here in the background of the paper, they talk about the three most common forms of prompting today. Input output, chain of thought, and self-consistency chain of thought. Uh, and we've already talked about those, so I'm gonna skip over this section. Next, it details what Tree of Thoughts is, and let's go through that. So the first step of Tree of Thoughts is thought decomposition, basically taking the problem and breaking it down into intermediate steps. 
Very similar to how the human brain works. If you have a very tough problem that you're trying to solve, you don't just look at that problem and solve it one for one. You break it down into smaller problems. An example of that is complex math problems. So as a human, you look at a complex math problem and you don't just solve it by looking at it one for one. You break down each individual segment, solve that, and then build it up into something that you can solve all at once from those individual pieces. And that's what thought decomposition is. Next is the thought generator. So given one of these pieces, given one of these intermediate steps, come up with different potential solutions for that intermediate step. Next is the state evaluator. So now that we have this tree starting to form, we have the initial node at the top, and then we start to have it broken down into intermediate steps. And for each of those intermediate steps, we need a way to evaluate whether that's a good path to take or a bad path to take or somewhere in between. And that's what the state evaluator does. It actually uses the large language model after the big problem has been broken down to evaluate all of the potential solutions for some of these intermediate steps. And I find that so fascinating that we're not only using the large language model to break down the big problem, but for each individual step, we're using it to evaluate how good a potential intermediate solution is. And here they say, we propose a third alternative by using the LM to deliberately reason about states. When applicable, such a deliberate heuristic can be more flexible than programmed rules and more sample efficient than learned models. They propose using one of two methods to evaluate each state. And the first is value-based. So they actually ask a large language model for a value one through 10 on how likely an intermediate step is to be a path to a given solution. Another way, rather than just using numbers one through 10, is asking to evaluate it by, is it sure, is it likely, or is it impossible? So let's take a look at what the game of 24 is, and then we'll head back to what we were just talking about. Game of 24 is a mathematical reasoning challenge where the goal is to use four numbers and basic arithmetic operations, so add, subtract, multiply, and divide, to obtain 24. So for example, given input 4, 9, 10, and 13, a solution output could be 10 minus 4, which is 6, multiplied by 13 minus 9, which is 4. So 6 multiplied by 4 equals 24. So coming back to evaluating each intermediate step, we can have common sense evaluations such as we know that one, two, and three are too small to reach 24. There's no possible combination of these three numbers with arithmetic to reach 24. Next, we look at all the leaves coming off of a given node. And we can actually have the large language model vote on which one is most likely to be the correct intermediate step to a solution. Now coming here to this chart, we're looking at two different algorithms that are possible with tree of thought. One is tree of thought using breadth for a search, and the other is tree of thought using depth for a search. And what that really means is if you can imagine you have a tree with nodes on it, breadth first search means it's going to search across horizontally, finding all the nodes on a single level, versus depth first search, meaning it's going to go as deep as it can into a branch on the tree before heading back up and trying that again. And that leads into the fourth component of tree of thought, which is the search algorithm. And that is breadth first or depth first. So let's look at tree of thought in the context of game of 24. For the task setup, they scraped fournums.com and it has about 1300 games. They ranked the games from easiest to hardest and then they took the top 100 hardest games. Then they use the standard input output prompt with five in context examples, which basically means here's some examples of here's four numbers and here's what the output would be. Here's another four, here's what the output would be. So basically giving it few shot prompts. So here's a chart of it going through the game of 24. So you can see it basically comes up on this level and these dot to dots means there's a bunch of other examples that are here. But for the ones that are shown, here's one that isn't working. So we have four plus nine equals 13. The numbers left are 10, 13, and 13, the output of this previous edition. And we evaluate, can 10, 13, and 13 equal 24 in any way? And the answer is no. And so that's why this is in red and the tree of thought stops there. But now coming over to here where it's in green, 10 minus four equals six. And then what we're left with is six, nine, and 13. Can six, nine, and 13 reach 24? Well, 13 minus nine is four. Then we have four and six left. Four times six is 24. 
And so that's how we get there. It's basically breaking down that math problem step by step and seeing, is it possible with what we have remaining to get to a solution? Now, again, from that initial branch, this one worked, but if we come over here and we look 13 minus six equals seven, what we have left is seven and nine. Can we get to 24 with seven and nine? The answer is no, we cannot. So here are the baselines. We use standard input output prompt with five in context examples. So I already talked about that. For chain of thought prompting, we augment each input output pair with three intermediate equations each operating on two remaining numbers. So again, chain of thought is breaking down a problem into intermediate steps. Then we also consider a chain of thought self-consistency baseline, which takes the majority output from 100 chain of thought samples and an iterative refine approach on the top of an IO sample for at most 10 iterations, basically saying, we take 100 chain of thought samples and whichever one is most consistently getting output, we're using those. So here are the results. So here we have the IO prompt, which had a 7.3% success rate, chain of thought at 4%, and chain of thought with self-consistency at 9%. Now, when we look at tree of thought with a breadth of one, it has 45%, but when we use a breadth of five, it jumped all the way to 74%. That is a 10x improvement over input output prompting. And you can see that tree of thought just absolutely crushed the other methods. Now, chain of thought with best of 100 did pretty well at 49%, but chain of thought with a best of 100 prompt takes a ton of prompting and that's a ton of resources being used. Next, they gave it a creative writing problem. We invent a creative writing task where the input is four random sentences and the output should be a coherent passage with four paragraphs that end in the four input sentences respectively. Such a task is open-ended and exploratory and challenges creative thinking as well as high-level planning. So for the task setup, they got a sample of random sentences from randomwordgenerator.com and got a hundred of those. And from there, they evaluated it in two ways. One, they used a GPT-4 zero-shot prompt to provide a one to 10 scalar score. So basically saying, how coherent is this passage? And then they also used human judgment in the same way. How coherent is this passage? Let's go down to here where they actually show an example. Write a coherent passage of four short paragraphs. The end sentence of each paragraph must be, it isn't difficult to do a handstand if you just stand on your hands. It caught him off guard that space smelled of seared steak. When she didn't like a guy who was trying to pick her up, she started using sign language and each person who knows you has a different perception of who you are. From there, we got a bunch of different plans and five in total. And so here are some of the plans. So plan one, introduce and explain the technique of doing a handstand, switch to a story about an astronaut's first time in space, describe a situation where a woman uses sign language to avoid unwanted attention. And the final paragraph explains how everyone has different perceptions of each other. Plan two is introduction to an unusual self-help book mentioning a handstand as a metaphor for embracing challenges, discuss the unexpected things learned from astronauts, including the smell of space, describe a woman's clever tactic for avoiding unwanted attention at a bar, and contemplate how different perceptions of oneself can shape one's identity. So they had the large language model vote on one of those five plans and plan two got the most votes, so they went with that. And so here are the creative writing results. We have the tree of thought, which is outperforming the input output and the chain of thought. And this is based on the GPT-4 coherency scores. And then for the human coherency comparison, and you can see that tree of thought also performed best. Last, they had mini crossword puzzles as the problem. Here we explore five by five mini crosswords as a harder search problem involving natural language. We aim to explore the limit of language models as a general problem solver that explores its own thoughts and guides its own exploration with deliberate reasoning as heuristics. And they measure it by the portion of correct letters, words, and games separately. As shown in table three, input output and chain of thought prompting methods perform poorly with a word level success rate of less than 16%, while tree of thought significantly improves all metrics, achieving a word level success rate of 60% and solving four out of 20 games. Such an improvement is not surprising given IO and COT lack mechanisms to try different clues, making changes to decisions or backtracking. And why is that important? It's because with crossword puzzles, every answer depends on every other answer. So you can't just answer one without thinking about what the potential answer is of all the other words around it. 
So that's why the tree of thought performs extraordinarily well versus input output or even chain of thought. In table three, we see the actual scores with input output getting 0% of the game solved, chain of thought getting 1%, and tree of thought getting 20%, which is obviously much better. So why is this all interesting? Let's take a look at this highlighted section. Our proposed tree of thought approach extends existing planning formulations by considering multiple potential feasible plans simultaneously at each problem solving step and proceeding with the most promising ones. The integration between thought sampling and value feedback organically integrates planning and decision making mechanisms, enabling effective search inside a solution tree. So it is basically setting up the large language model to be able to think ahead, to backtrack when it gets something wrong and to come up with the best solution based on a number of different potential paths to that solution. Now here they also talk about self-reflection. Using LLMs to assess the viability of their own predictions is becoming an increasingly important procedure in problem solving. I find that incredibly interesting. Now, if you remember a bunch of videos ago, I did a video about autonomous agents and that simulacra paper. And in that paper, they use the large language model to rank the insights and the memories by importance. So again, this notion of using the large language model to evaluate their own predictions, to evaluate other things is becoming increasingly common. Here they reference the reflections paper, which I'll put up on the screen now. And it says they introduced the self-reflection mechanism in which language models provide feedback to their generation candidates. So not only using language models to generate the candidates, but actually using them to evaluate the candidates. So what are some of the limitations? Deliberate search, such as tree of thought, might not be necessary for many existing tasks that GPT-4 already excels at. Now that's a really important thing to note. And especially as large language models get better past GPT-4, they're gonna be more and more capable of a wide set of logical problems, reasoning problems, mathematical problems, and these types of complex prompting structures might not be necessary. Also, search methods like Tree of Thought requires more resources, GPT-4 API costs, than sampling methods in order to improve task performances. But the modular flexibility of Tree of Thought allows users to customize such performance cost trade-offs. So that's the end of it. Now, at the beginning of the paper, they gave a GitHub link and it says code repo with all prompts. When I open it up, this is what's found. So code will be cleaned and released soon in a few days. That was four days ago. So hopefully it comes out soon. In the meantime, I found another repository that has an implementation of Tree of Thought. So here it is. It's by Kai Gomez, Tree of Thoughts. And this is an implementation that I've already tested out locally. It's pretty good. Some of the outputs are a little bit confusing and it's hard to tell what's going on at times, but I'm gonna dive more into this and figure out what's really going on. So now I'm gonna show you quickly how to get that repo installed. First, you're gonna grab this git clone and then the repo URL. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna switch back to Visual Studio Code. To open up the terminal, you click this little button in the top right. I'm gonna paste and it's gonna clone that repository to my desktop. From there, I'm gonna CD into Tree of Thoughts. So that's change directory, hit enter. And now I'm in Tree of Thoughts. So from there, I'm gonna click in the top right, the explore button. I'm gonna to go to open folder, and then I'm gonna open the Tree of Thoughts folder. And the next thing you have to do is write a script to utilize this Tree of Thoughts method. And they already provide an example.py, so let's go ahead and use that. And for the API key, I'm gonna to go to openapi.com and grab a new API key for myself. I'm gonna paste it in here. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to revoke this key before I publish the video. Then we're going to use v2 false and API base. We can leave that blank. So I'm gonna save. Now, if you haven't already done this, you're gonna run pip install openAI and that will install the openAI module. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do that now. And then there's a bunch of settings in here. I'll let you play around with them. You can use breadth first search, depth first search, chain of thought versus propose evaluation strategy, voting or value. And here's some other values that you can modify. And so here's the input problem where you can actually enter your prompt. So you can say, using one, two, six, and nine, use these four numbers and basic arithmetic operations to obtain 24. The output should be an equation. So I'll let you play around with that. I'll put the link in the description below to the repository and the research paper. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.